So in this week's video, I'm going to talk about my pregnancy and birthing story, which will make loads more sense if you saw my miscarriage story video. Go watch that now and then come back here. Or it's just to fill you in, I didn't start my vlogging journey until Max was 13 months old, mainly because I couldn't even communicate in the first year of motherhood. So there's a huge chunk that you guys missed out on, just basically to keep you in the loop. It hasn't been easy, it isn't easy, it's totally a work in progress, but this is kind of how I got here. It's the story that we all love to tell, right? I was pregnant whilst living in Singapore, which was incredibly hot and humid, and I'm just just like constantly a fat girl as in I just I just my body just wants to be big all the time I remember reading an old blog post about my pregnancy and about uh, month four or five in the post I was talking about all my cravings and how I crave fruit and how lucky I was that I wasn't putting on any weight because I was just craving fruit what a dick about month six and to nine came and I was basically just eating like chicken and rice chicken and rice everything in sight Asian women are quite tiny they're they're small naturally small so when they were pregnant they were you you you'd never tell from the back they were just and then they'd turn around you'd be like whoa but me I looked pregnant from the side the back I mean, even if you saw just my shoulders and head, you could definitely tell. And I swear to God, every scan I was just told, he's quite a big baby. That is quite a big baby. That's a big baby. That's a big baby. Head massive. Yes, you want your baby to be healthy and, you know, a good size, but you don't want to be told that your baby is ginormous and has a big head when it's got to come through the a tiny hole. I always, always, like in life, have always thought if I uh, get lucky enough to deliver my baby, I will try and deliver my baby vaginally. Yeah, I said it. But as soon as I miscarried and I had a DNC, which is a procedure to remove the bambino, um, something just clicked. It just something just changed. It was very bizarre, and I wanted all the control I could possibly have. So I asked for a planned C-section. As soon as I did believe I was pregnant, which was around 20 weeks, I just wanted to hold on to the baby. Also, I just wanted him to be delivered quickly and as safely as possible. Sounds like an easy decision, like me just saying it like that. But the doctor made me ask him something like three or four times. It was like an Austin Powers movie. It wasn't just as easy as saying, this is what I'm gonna have done, so you're gonna do it. And I had loads of conversations with my midwife about it because she was just like, you're healthy, you can do this. She was such a good cheerleader, but I was like, no. You know, I've researched into it, I read loads of stories, I just, I, I definitely was very, com you know, I was happy with my decision to go ahead with a plan C-section. I don't know, from very early on, I just knew what I wanted and uh, just getting that bit of control, just owning that just made me feel a lot better about the pregnancy and in turn I feel like it made me have a very calm pregnancy it was very very smooth so you get to pick the day your baby comes yeah it was just all very organized we had our date so we had to arrive at 6 a.m. in the morning I can't explain it except it was just so peaceful then the nurses came and got me uh, they wheeled me down to theater and I remember being in the corridor outside the theater for a little while I mean to now in I look back in my head it was probably like 10 minutes but when I remember just lying there and I was on my own at this point because Ian was getting um, scrubbed up I just got really cold and I suddenly got really nervous. They wheeled me into the room and Ian still wasn't there. I just remember thinking, where is he? Because the anaesthetist was like talking to me and they were already like kind of dosing me up and I was just like, he's still not here. And I remember my anaesthetist being like, you're a bit nervous. Do you want me to give you something? I remember saying to him, you know what? <laughs> I kind of like to be two martinis into this already and he was like I've got you it was like being drunk but you're that drunk that you're kind of aware of what you're saying but you know you should be quiet so Ian came in he was all it looked like a scene out of Breaking Bad and I just remember saying to him this is what Lindsay Lohan feels like and he was just like what has happened and then 
Max arrived and crying immediately. Uh, he was weighed, he was put on me, pictures taken. We were so happy and because I had planned the C-section and I was informed and I knew everything was gonna happen, I knew I wasn't going to get skin on skin for that first half hour, say, because I'd be taken into recovery. But because I knew what was going on, I'd already made my peace with that. And I figured, you know, I'd waited nine months. What's another half an hour? And, you know, I'd already planned with Ian. Dude, you've got to take your shirt off and get some skin on skin with this kid. And to this day, their bond is like that. So I just think, dang it, it's that first half an hour of skin on skin. So Ian took Max, he left. I was being stitched up or whatever they do, staple gum. And then I was wheeled out of recovery, taken to my room where Ian and Max were. And I just remember Ian handing me Max being like, he is ginger. <laughs> I suddenly realized if everything was so controlled before, nothing was ever going to be like that again. My whole world had changed. I just remember them sticking him on me, pulling down my top and getting my boobs out and basically putting the nipple into Max's mouth. And I remember thinking, well, this is all right. Yeah, um, about half an hour later, I was just like, what new hell is this? The nipple pain. Oh my absolute goodness that is for another day but that is my pregnancy and birthing story 2013 it was so it was so long ago it's mad i just feel like the nine months of pregnancy plus the first year of your baby's life which should definitely be counted as the fourth trimester is just an all-consuming couple of years so funny to be here now and looking back on it and just being like oh that was a chapter of my life but at the time it was just like as always, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!